Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Radial Repeat in Adobe Illustrator to create this design. Now, this is one of Illustrator's newer features, which was added when Illustrator 25.1 was released in January of 2021. And the first thing I'm going to do is get the Ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and drag out an ellipse on the artboard so I can show you how this works. I'll get the Selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and we're going to come up to Object and down to Repeat. Now I'll choose Radial, but in my future videos, I'm going to be explaining the Grid Repeat and the Mirror Repeat. I'll click on Radial, and Illustrator creates a design that now has eight of the same objects together. They're arranged evenly in a circle, and they're exactly the same size and design as that first one that I created. But I'm not locked into the design as it is, and that's what makes this feature so useful. The first thing that I can change is the number of repeats that I have in the design. To change that, I come to this little circle on the right side of the bounding box. If I click down and hold and I drag down, I decrease the number of instances of the repeat. And if I drag up, I increase the number of instances of the repeat. I can accomplish the same thing by going over to the Properties panel and in the Repeat Options area, I can click up or down to increase or decrease the number of instances as well. Next, I can modify the radius, which is going to determine how close or how far apart the objects are to one another. I do that by coming to this little white circle that is centered at the top of the larger circle. When I drag up, I increase the radius and I increase the space between each of my objects. When I drag to the center, I decrease the radius and my objects are so close together that in this particular instance, they're even overlapping. And when the objects are this close together and they're overlapping, they're stacked one on top of each other. And I can reverse that overlap by clicking this little box here on the Properties panel. I'll click once to reverse it. And then watch the artboard as I click it again and it changes back. Then if I want to limit where I have repeats on my circle, I use the splitter, which is this little split circle that's centered at the bottom of this bigger circle. Now right now I have 12 repeats of my design, but when I click and drag on the splitter, it's going to limit where my objects can be and it's going to remove some of the repeats. So where I had 12 before, I now have 10. And if I click and drag on the left splitter, I'll change that even more. Now we're down to seven repeats, but I can increase the repeats. They're just going to be increasing in the upper part of my circle where I don't have a dotted line. So let's come back and we'll increase the repeat options again. And I can also change the radius and we have all sorts of different designs that we can create. Now I'm going to undo these moves, keyboard shortcut Command Z and Command Z and Command Z, and I'm just going to keep pressing that until we're back to our circle of 12 objects. And then if I want to change the size of the design with the selection tool active, I come to one of the corners and I simply drag up or drag back to change that. And I don't even have to hold down the shift key like you do most of the time when you're scaling objects. Now don't stop the video because I'm about to show you one of the coolest things that radial repeat can do. Not only can I make the changes I just showed you, I can also go in and edit the shape itself and it's going to totally change the design. I do that by double clicking on one of the objects. This moves me into the radial repeat mode and it doesn't matter which object I choose. I don't have to remember what the original one was. I can choose any one of these objects and whatever change I make to the selected object, Illustrator is going to apply to all the rest of them. I'll get the direct selection tool, keyboard shortcut A, and I'll 
click on the upper anchor here and I'm going to just drag it down. And as I do, you see that the change is made to every one of the objects. If I click on the right anchor and adjust the handle, not only am I adding the curve to this object, but Illustrator's added it to every single one of them. Let's undo those moves, keyboard shortcut Command Z and Command Z. And this time I'm going to grab the upper anchor and I'm going to curve it around. And that makes quite an interesting design, but I can make even more changes. I can change the attributes by coming in here and let's just change this to blue. And I'm going to increase the stroke to two points. And then I can actually add new objects to the design. So I'm going to get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and I'm going to change the fill color here to a bright orange and click on the artboard to close that out. And then I'll place my mouse right here at the end anchor. I'll hold down the shift key because I want to drag a perfect circle. And I'm going to hold down the option key to drag from this center point out. And I'm going to drag out circles and get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and click on the artboard to deselect that. This is what makes this such a functional feature because you can make all sorts of changes. I'll get the pen tool, keyboard shortcut P, and I'm going to remove the fill color and I'm going to change the stroke color to white. And then I'll click here in the center of the design and I'm going to come up and click and then hold my mouse down and drag the handle. And now I have little strokes on every one of my objects. I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V to close out the pen tool. I'll come over and click on the word stroke and I'm going to change the profile of my stroke. I'll come down to the bottom of the stroke dialog box and click on this little pull down menu and I'll choose this width profile and then I'll increase the weight of the stroke. I'll set it at eight points and click on the artboard to deselect it. And when I'm finished adding and changing the actual designs, I move out of the radial repeat mode. I come up to this gray bar, which is just above my artboard, and click on the arrow on the left side. This moves me back one level, and then I'll click it again to exit the isolation mode. Now to complete this design for a project, the last thing I would do is to expand it. But until I do, I can still make changes even though I've moved out of that radial repeat isolation mode. I'll click on the design and go over to the properties panel and I'll increase the number of repeats and then click on the artboard to deselect it. Well, this is how I'm going to leave my design. So to finalize it, I'll select all of the objects and come up to Object and Expand. And here I have Object and Fill checked. And I'm going to say OK, and then I'll click on the artboard to deselect it. I'm not able to use any of those radial repeat functions anymore. However, I still can make some changes by ungrouping everything. Keyboard shortcut Shift Command G. I'll click on the artboard to deselect everything and get the direct selection tool. Keyboard shortcut A. And I can select any single object and either move them, edit them, change their color, or whatever I want to do. Then I can get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, select everything, and I can resize it from any corner anchor, but this time I do have to hold the shift key down so that I maintain my correct proportions. And that's how you use radial repeat in Adobe Illustrator. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something. In my next videos, I'll be covering the grid repeat and the mirror repeat, which are two more of Illustrator's newer features. If you don't want to miss those or any of my future tutorials, then subscribe to my channel and click that notification bell. I'll look forward to seeing you soon, and thank you so much for watching. Bye now.